Every time a Major League Baseball player jogs towards the mound or steps up to the plate, they've got a song accompanying them. This wasn't always the case, and some of the biggest names in the game never had a song. More recently, Edwin Diaz has helped a Dutch EDM duo and an Australian musician reach global stardom. Let's take a look at how that happened. And it happened because of this five-year-old song called Narco. There's a trumpet and a bit of rumbling drum beat that plays when Mets pitcher Diaz walks out of the bullpen, and this usually happens in the ninth inning, and we wait for that 100-mile fastball and dreaded slider to be unleashed at the opponent. The baseball-headed team mascots Mr. and Mrs. Met roam around the shelters with bugles in their hands, and that really gets the crowd going. And as the camera switches from black and white to color, here comes Diaz, sprinting to the hill to the sound of Narco, a five-year-old song by Dutch EDM duo Blaster Jacks and Australian bugler Timmy Trumpet. The tune has become a signature for Diaz, but more than that, it's done well for the musicians too. It put the song that was originally released in 2017 at the number one spot on Spotify's Viral 50, with streaming numbers close to 42 million. But walk-up music has always been a thing. What makes this one so iconic? So Diaz is usually the closer. The pitcher walks in to save the game in the last inning. Needless to say, that's way more dramatic than any other walk-up. In fact, in the past, Mariano Rivera of the Yankee Hall of Fame would walk into the sound of Metallica's Sandman, while Trevor Hoffman did his thing to Hell's Bells by ACDC, but Diaz has taken the practice to the next level. He's hit almost two out of three batters that he's faced and is leading the Mets to the top of the National League East, and for the first time in seven years, all while this song is playing. So we've come to recognize this song almost as a victory march beat, right? The song has become a bit of a lucky charm for the pitcher, but more on that later. But this is all very new for the boys of Blaster Jacks. The electronic music duo came together at The Hague in 2010. Tom Youngkin and Idir Maklav brought together big room house and electro music to the big stage at EDM festivals like Ultra Music and Electric Daisy Carnival. They've even collaborated with global superstars David Guetta, Afrojack, Nicky Romera, and Hardwell. While the boys are stars in their own right, this particular piece of music has brought a whole new audience to their music. Let's just say that baseball isn't really big news in Holland. In fact, it's called Hunkball, but they've had a couple of players in the major U.S. leagues. Pitcher Bert Blylevin and shortstop Didi Gregorius are both Dutch. John Kind admitted, while their music's been played in stadiums before, it's nothing like this. This is huge. A lot of it has also got a lot to do with how well the Mets are playing, and it's all coming together so well. In a way, Diaz's closer pitcher theme song is becoming a victory anthem for the Mets and creating newfound stardom for Blaster Jacks in the USA. And Timmy Trumpet has added a flavor of his own. Also on the signature sound is another EDM star. Star, the Australian Timmy Trumpet. The original tracks by Blaster Jacks had a traditional Middle Eastern flute part. This was replaced by Trumpet's signature horn sound, which sounds a bit like a matador entering the bull ring, meeting a spaghetti western duel meets a soldier going into battle. This is appropriate when you think of how Diaz enters to conquer the field. Honestly, the trumpet sounds a lot more epic, majestic even. The combination of drums and melody just makes it so dramatic. No wonder the stadium lights up when it plays. But is the song really a lucky charm for Diaz. We think there may be some truth to the speculation, and here's why. The Mets pitcher first started using the song for his walk-up back in 2018. This is when he was pitching for Seattle. He saved 57 games in the process, but then he dropped the song when he was traded to the Mets. When he started to play for the New York team, he picked a much less dramatic song, No Hey Limite by Mikey Woods. Interestingly enough, this coincided with him having his worst year ever in 2019. There were seven blown saves, seven losses, and a staggering 5.59 earned average run. The 28-year-old Puerto Rican then switched back to Narco in 2021, and that's when the magic came back. He's had a fantastic year so far with the Mets. There's even talk of him being considered for the Cy Young and MVP award, so clearly this song does work. Sometimes it's just about getting the right song, and Narcos delivers on that. And there are even more rumors of a live performance during a game. The song has had a resurgence in popularity mostly because of Diaz and the Mets. In fact, even Atlanta Braves catcher William Contreras uses it for his walk-up. Recently, Blaster Jacks and Edward Diaz exchanged video messages on social media. This caused many to think that the threesome could make an appearance at the Mets' city field to play the song live. But John Kent didn't confirm the fact. He did say that he was very excited to watch this first-ever baseball game, mostly to join that party that builds up when Diaz walks out to the mound. He even went on to say that this is exactly 
exactly the kind of atmosphere that the song was made for. Clearly, the Dutch musician is a Mets fan for life. And now let's see what else is happening in the world of MLB. First up, Bartolo Colon is ready to retire. Right before the Mets old timers game at City Field, Bartolo Colon revealed this to Spanish radio broadcaster Johnny Trujillo. The player will be retiring from professional baseball after one more winter league season. The Dominican pitched in 21 seasons from 1997 to 2018. He played for 11 MLB teams, including the Red Sox, Yankees, and Rangers. He is also one of four-time All-Star and the 2005 American League Cy Young Award with the Angels. Earlier this year, there were reports that he was looking to make his comeback to Major League Baseball, ideally with the Mets, but that didn't work out. And now it seems that the 49-year-old right-hander will be saying goodbye to the league later this year. Meanwhile, a 1952 Mickey Mantle card has sold for a record-breaking amount. The finest known example of a 1952 Topps Mantle card has been sold for a staggering $12.6 million. It was sold through Heritage Auctions, and it's the most amount of money paid for any kind of sports item, whether card or memorabilia. The previous record was $7.25 million for a T206 Honus Wagner card sold earlier this month. It was consigned to the collectibles marketplace called Gold, and the card's got quite a story behind it. In 1986, Alan Rosen got a call that someone named Ted Lodge had 1952 Topps cards for sale, which he found in his father's home. Now, this father was a driver who drove Topps products. The distribution of the 1952 set had famously been messed up, and this treasure trove was just sitting in the basement for years in pristine condition. But Rosen drove to pay $125,000 for about 5,500 of these cards. This includes dozens of mantles. In 1991, Rosen sold one of these ungraded mantles for $50,000, and for 31 years, the buyer remained anonymous and the card remained ungraded. This is that mantle card. Talk about a story. And lastly, Ichiro Suzuki has joined the Seattle Mariners Hall of Fame. Ichiro Suzuki has been inducted into the Seattle Mariners Hall of Fame. He gave a full 16-minute speech at the event, reflecting on his career. This makes him the 10th member of Seattle's Hall of Fame. He joins his former teammates Ken Griffey, Edgar Martinez, Jamie Moyer, Jay Buhner, and Dan Wilson. All but Buhner were in attendance. The ceremony also included video messages from several baseball stars, including Mike Trout, Shohei Otani, Albert Pujols, and Daisuke Matsuzaka. The president of the Baseball Hall of Fame, Josh Rawich, was also in attendance. He'll be eligible for induction into Cooperstown in 2025. He spent the first 11 seasons of his major league career with the Mariners, after which he was traded to the New York Yankees midway through the 2012 season. The Japanese player did parts of three seasons with the Yankees and another three more in Miami before returning to Seattle to close his career. His last appearance came at the beginning of the 2019 season when Seattle opened with two games in Japan. He announced his retirement after the second game. That's a wrap for this video. Do you think this song is really a lucky charm for the New York Mets? Let us know in the comments below. Make sure to give this video a thumbs up and subscribe to our channel for more videos like this. See you in the next one.